demonstration to show the importance of preventative counseling for your patient to take care of their oral hygiene and prevent gingivitis. Hi Melissa, I'm Maggie, I'll be your hygienist today. Good morning. Good morning. We're going to take a look at your gums right now. They look a little bit red and a little bit inflamed, which is what gingivitis is. Red gums and inflammation can mean that there's bacteria down underneath your gums that's causing them to react that way. Okay. By brushing at home, you can really relieve a lot of that irritation. Okay. I, I do brush at home, but my gums, my gums just bleed all, all the time. This picture here shows what biofilm is. It's another word for plaque. And so when it accumulates on the side of the tooth, it can cause the gingiva to move away from the tooth and cause a deeper little pocket there. And we don't want those pockets because that means that there's bone loss. So by brushing and removing all of that, all of that yellow plaque and bacteria, you can prevent all that from happening. So what I'm measuring right now is between one and three millimeters, right on the probe here. Mm -hmm. So when it's between those numbers, you still have healthy gingiva. When the numbers become larger, that means it's a deeper pocket, and that's when you run into more periodontal problems. Okay. And that's more permanent with bone loss. All right, so that concludes your whole mouth there, but we do have a lot of bleeding going on. And you said that happens when you brush at home? Yeah, that always happens. Well, it's not typical. Well, it may be typical, but it's not normal. Mm -hmm. So what we try to do is really um, increase the level of health of your gingiva to stop all of the bleeding whatsoever. Mm -hmm. So flossing and brushing together will help you not have any bleeding ever when you're brushing your teeth. But I do brush my teeth. Mm -hmm. What we're going to do is try to get, remove a lot more of that, um, that black and biofilm, and that way that redness and irritation will like calm all down, and when you're brushing it won't be as irritated. So if we start doing more flossing beforehand, I'll show you what to do with the floss, mm -hmm. and then you brush and sweep all the bacteria right away, and there should, over a course of time, not be any more bleeding. So you're going to show me how to brush and floss? Yep, I'm going to get floss for you right now. All right, Melissa, if you take about 18 inches or about, sometimes an arm's length works if you're going to use your whole mouth. Okay. And you're going to wrap it around your little fingers. Mm-hmm. Or on one side, you don't want to reuse the floss. You want to be able to shift down the floss as you shift around your mouth. So you hold it and use your pointer fingers and your thumbs for a little bit of stability. And as you press in around your tooth, say this is your tooth, you're going to press in in a nice C-shape and go up and down, up and down. Okay. And sweep that stuff right out from the side of that tooth. And between those same teeth, you're going to pull it back against the, the opposite tooth there, the tooth right next to it, and do the same thing. Pull it close to a C-shape and a couple of up and downs. And then move the floss over a little bit and do the same thing on the next tooth. So every time you go down between teeth, you're going to use a new little section of floss. So in your C-shape, moving over, in your C-shape. Perfect. Okay. All right, I'm going to watch you put the floss on your fingers, and then I'm going to watch you floss it, and so we can make sure you're doing it accurately. Like this? Yep. You can even wind it a little more on one side so that you can use the whole piece of floss as you shimmy down. Okay. And then like this, you said? Yep. And when you put it in between your teeth, you're going to pull it like a C-shape. One, two, three, scoop. Good job. And come out, and then you're going to move down your floss, and go back in and use it, go on the other side. One, two, three, up. Oh, good job. And now we'll go over a little bit of brushing as well. So when you do your whole mouth like that, sometimes you're going to use a lot of floss, but that's okay. You're going to use your toothbrush afterwards. All right, so we'll go over some quick toothbrushing here. So on this, when you have your teeth, you're going to want it at a 45 degree angle and a really nice soft vibrating motion. Okay. Alright, and then when you're all brushed up, you sweep it away from the gum line to get all that bacteria away. Go ahead and try. I want to see you try. Nice, and comfortable, what soft What degree grip. angle you said? 45 degrees. So if you're doing, yep. Like this? Your bottom teeth is going to be like this. Okay. And little soft vibratory motions. You're going to do two teeth at a time and then sweep away. Yep. And that's the roll. All right, Melissa, this picture here shows you the 45 degree angle on your teeth. Mm -hmm. And you're brushing right along the gum line. And we talked about that roll away from the gums. It's a gentle brush on both sides. So you have to make sure you get your tongue side and your cheek side. And then make sure you also brush your tongue. Okay. And they also make tongue scrapers if you're interested. We can talk about that. This just shows, again, your 45 degree angle for your toothbrush. So if you practice this, doing your flossing and brushing regularly for your care, 
um, your gingivitis should subside. So in a couple weeks you should see a lot less redness, a lot less inflammation, and a lot less bleeding. So when you come back in six months for your visit, you should see a total different, totally different mouth. That sounds great. Yeah. Oh, okay, stop. <laughs>